Kali martial arts sticks, or also known as Eskrima, or our knee sticks are simply short sticks. These are about 28 inches, if you look, they go from the tip of my finger into my shoulder. So that's about the right size. Yours can be longer or shorter. You can use two or one. If you only have one, use one. You can take a broom, cut it in half, and get a pair that way. Start with one in each hand if you have two, and I want you to spin them forward. We're gonna loosen the wrists. We're gonna get your wrists warmed up, get the blood flowing in there. We wanna stay safe from injury during this workout. You're just going forward and down at the same time. You're gonna do this for 30 seconds and then reverse it. Going in the reverse stretches it out in a different way. But it's gonna keep you safe from injury. When you start fighting with sticks, you want to have great mobility, great flexibility. Let's see, uh, Shannon's here, Kubatons, smell that right, or spell it right, yes. We'll work on Kubatons, and hello to Stephen of Tallahassee. Going backward, you've got 30 seconds there. Now what I want you to do is I want you to go down and up in your strike. And I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit. Apologize, we don't have a cameraman right now. But we're going to go up and down. And I want you to start to get the blood to flow into the sh shoulder joint. I'm going to keep your safe, or shoulders safe from injury, but this is also going to allow you to start to strike much, much faster with your collie sticks. When you start fighting with sticks, you want great flexibility, you want great mobility, you need strength and endurance. Keep your stomach up and in, abs tight. Do this one for 30 seconds, and then I want you to split it. And when you split it, you're going to feel you get more stretch on each side by isolating the arm one at a time. And then you're going to do this for 30 seconds. So your whole workout is not going to take that long when you start fighting with sticks. But you want to do a proper warm-up. You want to get everything stretched out. You want to get strength in your hands. You want to get it moving that way. Um, I'm going to check your comments in just a little bit. But I want to get everybody moving through this warm-up first. You're going to do this twisting motion that you just did. We're going to put it together with that up and down motion. And this, you think about it, that's really coming straight down. This is the vertical strike. But you're going to add that spin to the vertical strike up, spin to the vertical strike down, coming up and down. You're doing them both at the same time. This is all warm up. This is all to build strength, speed, balance, coordination make you better fighting those sticks, especially when you use Kali martial arts sticks. And you can call them a scream of sticks or knee sticks. Those are all correct terms. Or you can just call it a short martial art fighting stick. Up and down. And then I want you to do one hand at a time, kind of like we split the other one. You're going to do that for 30 seconds. Bringing it up and bringing it back. And then if you can, Try to do them at the same time. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, take your time. The whole time I want your stomach up and in, abs tight. You're gonna get really strong, really fast in this motion. Now, that's your warm up. Let's get into the strikes. You're gonna hold your hand toward the end, but make sure there's a little bit here coming out of the end. I wanna teach you how to strike straight into the face with that, go into the throat, go into their solar plexus, maybe down in the groin, come around to the side of the head or into the body. So with this out there, this is striking. You can also use this later once you learn more of the martial art, the Kali side of it or the Eskrima, how to strip away a stick from their hand or a knife from their hand, or you can use it to catch their arm and pull them in. So you're always going to have a little bit there. Make sure you choke up a little bit, as they used to say, you know, choking up in baseball or in golf. So choke up a little bit, make sure you have a little bit there at the end. You're going to start with one on your shoulder, the other one on the shoulder, and on your right side, put your right foot forward, make yourself a smaller target. Coming from your shoulder, I want you to think of striking with this tip. It's similar to the nunchucks. You're going to use that tip as a slicing weapon. If this were a machete, if this were a short sword, it's always the same thing. You slice with a bladed weapon, you don't chop. It's not a hatchet, right? It has to have that slicing motion. So you're gonna slice through. That's where the arc comes in because this joint is round. You're gonna have an arc. So from here, you're gonna slice through, bring it up to the opposite shoulder, 
and slice through. So you're gonna have angle one comes through, angle two comes back the other way. Now notice that as I bring my sticks in this way, you see them cutting up the center of my body. I want you to go for the center of his body for self-defense. So from here, you're always gonna fight from behind your sticks. And what that means is you're not gonna be wide out here. Big wide strikes leaves you open in the center. Big wide strikes are easy to stop. If you're fighting here, strikes coming through, the midline coming through the center are much harder for them to stop and they leave you in this protected cone. You wanna be behind this stick the whole time, fighting behind your collie sticks. So from here, bring it through here, slicing down, bring it up to here, slicing down, bring it into here, go to the other side, to here and here. We're just doing two angles to start, coming from the temple to the cheek, or the neck to the other side of the body, or the shoulder to the other side, but go through the center, go through the center, bring it here, switch your feet. Anytime you strike with his left hand on this warm up today, you're gonna have the left side forward. Slicing through the middle, slice through the middle, switch feet, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I'm going to have you fight like Jason Bourne or like that guy, uh, Liam Neeson, in the Taken movie. You guys have probably seen Taken or the Bourne uh, movies, right? They're using all of these Filipino martial arts fighting techniques in those movies. That's all, whether they're fighting with their hands or they're fighting with a stick or a bladed weapon, that's where that style comes from. So if you've ever seen <laughs> Abigail, yeah, they're in there somewhere. Abigail asked if I had abs. Yes, they're in there somewhere. <laughs> not just behind this shirt. Um, I'm not that lean. I think that's your question. Am I that lean? Uh, I haven't been that lean since I was a young Marine. So, no. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. And I want you to do it this way. I want you to come in with the right side and the left side and the right side and the left side but I want you to constantly move your feet. I want you to fight like you're getting ready to, uh, be, uh, that one of those Taken movies or the Jason Bourne movies. You gotta go in and defend yourself or defend your family or take something back that's unfairly taken from you. So you're gonna go in, one foot coming with the other foot and I'm gonna move the camera because I can see myself in the mirror but you guys can see my feet. I know you can't see my abs, that's probably a good thing. I'm gonna tilt it down a little bit. But from here, right, left, coming in, coming in with that strike. So you're slicing in, slicing in, one, two, one, two. And I want you to get really tight, like I said, go tight when you're fighting here. Then, I want you to angle four, or angle three and four. Once it's down, your palm is facing the sky, you're gonna come to the same side, right hip, coming up to the left, drop, and up to the right, and then the same thing. When it's over here, it's gonna come up and come up. So right foot in and down, up and back, left foot down, up and back. So one, two, three, four, slow is smooth, smooth is fast, slow it down at first, get the basic structure, keep it super tight, one, two, three, four. When you're leading, you're leading with these knuckles, Imagine, there's the bladed surface, right? You're slicing through. Imagine this is a machete. You're slicing through with the blade. So when you're coming up, you also have to turn that hand out and you have to picture that. Try to keep that surface coming through those knuckles. Imagine if you're holding the machete or a knife where that blade would be and slice through that way, slicing up this way. Now the next two strikes, next two angles, we have one, two, three, four, slice through and slice back. We're gonna do four slicing motions, through and back and switching the feet because I want you to get your heart rate up. I want you to make this more of a fighting exercise. Two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, to slow and smooth, smooth as fast, and speed it up as you can. Now, when I teach weapons, I'm teaching for self-defense, so it's not just always the same as you would do if you were in a traditional martial arts class and you have to learn 
all the little intricate esoteric stuff. There's nothing wrong. That's all good stuff to learn. You should learn that. But I want you to learn how to defend yourself first. So when we do basic techniques, I'm leaving out some things that you would get if you were, if we were doing a traditional class in martial arts. But when I say stick fighting techniques, stick fighting for self-defense, I have a specific purpose, which is not necessarily, I'm going to change the angle, not necessarily the same purpose that I would have if I wanted to learn all of the tradition, the history, the artistry, the aesthetics of a martial art. That's very important, I think, for you to understand that there are two different things. One is the beauty of the art form, the martial art, and the other is the fighting, per the practicality. So we're going to go practicality first and then learn the other stuff later. So from here, keep these smooth, simple, fast. But what I want you to do is I want you to start to go faster and faster, hitting harder, slicing faster, putting more pressure on your hand as you swing through so that you can keep a good grip on this thing and strike full speed, full force, full power. Get that heart rate up as if you were really defending yourself. If you had to defend yourself and you had to rely on being faster, stronger, whatever. Then we're going to add after these basic slight, those four slashing strikes, right? So we have a downward X and upward X. We have one to one side, one to the other side. I want you to come straight down on top, just boom, right in the middle of the head, right? Or in that shoulder blade, maybe that, uh, that bone right there, right? Break that bone, uh, break that. Maybe you, you sidestep smash. They're coming in with, uh, with a knife and then you sidestep smash, break a joint, break a wrist, break an elbow for self-defense. So the last one is boom, comes straight down the middle. So you have down, down, up, two up, one from side, one to the other side, straight down the middle. Basic, basic moves. Slicing moves first. Second, I want you to do thrusting moves. First this one, and then this one. So stepping in and thrust, step and thrust, step and thrust, step and thrust, and then turn and thrust. Turn and thrust. So you can thrust coming down, you can thrust coming in, you can thrust coming straight all with this part. There's also this jabbing thrust coming from the back hand. So we can practice that in combination like we did the other one. So but starting with the right foot forward and starting here, I like to start on the shoulders for the, uh, because yeah, it's a lot like surfing, Shannon, from the shoulders because it keeps you, it gets your slices coming through the middle. But really, I would like you to have the sticks between you and the threat. Later when you learn like the Sinawali patterns, and you learn how to do that, I also want you to come back to the shoulder as much as you can and learn how to keep that cone of protection around you, how to fight tight like this. But you're not gonna send a Wally somebody. If you were, um, who's the actor that does uh, Born? Not the new guy, but the old guy, the Born Supremacy. Matt Damon, Goodwill Hunting. If you were Goodwill Hunting, you might. Like fight some guys like that. You might fight the Marines in the embassy in Istanbul using your hand techniques. Like, I don't know. But that's, that's all for show, right? We're going to focus on hard strikes. We're going to focus on basic thrusting motions and thrusting motions for self-defense, for practical self-defense. That's the purpose of this size collie stick. Now, this collie stick is made in rattan. I have a new uh, collie stick coming. Good afternoon, Justin. And it's going to be in the link. It's the first link below it's from Kane Masters. I don't think they've updated the site yet, but check back in a day or two. And it's made out of ochre hickory. And uh, he told me they're in the mail. I should get them today or tomorrow. They haven't come yet today, so I'm waiting for them tomorrow. As soon as I get them, I'll show you what the, how they feel. But he gave me a sample pair. I was out at the place uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was messing with the sample ones, and it's night and day. These are great. These were tan. They're so durable. They're so fun. But after a while... They start to, I don't know where this one is. They start to, they start falling. Especially if you send a Wally with somebody. Or you do your, you start practicing with somebody, which is really cool and fun. But what I want you to learn, uh, practical self-defense, pick a weapon that you can use for self-defense if you have to. I want you to have something that shatters bones. Now, this I mean, you, you can 
you can go fast. You can, I mean, you can cause contusions. You can cause slicing. You can cause cuts in somebody. You can even break bones with rattan or bamboo. But if you have, um, bamboo is very rare. It's usually rattan. This is rattan. They're both grasses, but bamboo is a little bit different the way it's made. It looks like that on the end. That's rattan. And if you pull it apart, you'll see it starts coming off. It's stringy like grass. It's a big, basically a grass. But the, um, the hickory one, that thing is, uh, it's wicked. It's really wicked. So yeah, a scream are awesome. That's what these are. But I have the, uh, I have the ones that I'll carry in my car for self-defense that'll go in the back in my uh, get home bag. If you guys have a get home bag, I, I did one uh, video last year on what to put in your get home bag, but it's the same. Most people think of a bug out bag, right? That you have to go to the mountains because there's an EMP or something. But a get home bag is what happens if I'm here, my house is seven miles that way, which it is, and something happens, my kids and my wife are seven miles that way, and my truck doesn't work, or the roads are impassable, I throw that thing on my back, I actually have a pair, I have my second pair of rattan out in the car in my get home bag if it's the when stuff hits the fan bag. And when stuff hits the fan bag, but I'm gonna take those out and I'm gonna stick my hickory ones in there because I mean, it, they just split the air. They're amazing the way they're made. All right, so let's talk about thrusts. Right foot forward in, left foot forward in, just practice that. I want you to practice moving. And yes, kind of like a dance almost as if you were dancing, step with the right, step with the left, and practice your accuracy, practice your thrust, right? You don't practice it, it won't get stronger, it won't get more accurate. Eventually, oh, see all that shaking I'm doing? I wanna get rid of that shake. Obviously, I haven't been practicing enough on this size thrust. I wanna get rid of that shake so that when it comes out, and I will, we'll do it together. In like three, four weeks, we'll be back here, we'll be that, doing that thrust, and it's just gonna stick and hold. And then the second one is coming up and in, thinking about going down into his throat, into his eyes, into the solar plexus, and then the third one is over the top, right? Either into the eye, so your wrist position is what changes, your hand position, your arms and your elbows. So you have straight ahead, you have coming on the inside of your body and the outside. Those are your three basic thrusts. So when your right foot's forward, one, inside outside switch one inside outside and exhale striking hard and you might not necessarily do it in that pattern but what you're gonna do wicked strength and power along that chain in that whole every part of that strike the last thrust after you do this is turn so it's covering you here and then straight in, right? And you're coming right in to the face, into the body. Now, I finally have somebody, here's a lake. He's here late, but just a little bit, just a little bit. So I'm gonna ask him to come out so I can show you guys what to do if they grab your stick. Hold these sticks, this is Liam. You guys can say hi to Liam. Hello, hello. Liam, show him how to use those college sticks. I'm putting him on the spot, he doesn't know how to use college sticks yet. I don't know how to use uh, the cane, but I guess not these. Oh, God, that's right. You have trained with cane. I just did that so it would have something to hold. All right. So Liam's here to, we're, we're boxing tonight. A little Muay Thai and some kickboxing. Now, if he grabs the end of the stick, this is the question you guys have been asking me. I promised you I would get a live human being. Liam is the closest thing to a live human being. It's a little joke. You have your, you have your stick in this position. Now, this is the Hanbo. We've been working Hanbo, Bo, Joe, and then we just got done with the Kali sticks, the short sticks. And I said with the Hanbo, you're either gonna slide it down here, I can strike in here, I can come in the face, I can jab here, I can right into the throat, I can bring this through, striking, or you can lift it straight up here, and what if he grabs it? Grab it, one hand or two, however you want. Now, if he grabs it, the biggest concern is he's gonna take it away from me and beat me with it. I know I would. If I were him, right, for self-defense, you have to immediately get your other hand on it. Now, look at this position. This is obvious now, and, and I'm totally putting him on the spot. You guys saw that, right? He came in, 
put him on the spot. You texted me earlier. I said, I'm running a little late. I said, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll be warmed up. From here, you simply turn. See what that does to his arms? And this right here, now these, there are nerves in there. They're touching. I can continue to just push straight or I can go around. Go ahead and grab it again. I can just go around, grab it again, make it even more resistant. He's, he's trying to figure out how do I make it more resistance. Good. Now he's got more resistance. I want you to pull, which is going to force him to do what? He wants to pull it back, pull it back. Yeah, so it's, it's instinctive. If I pull, he get, we get a tug of war, and I'm going to let him have it. I'm trying not to hit him. Yeah. And then I'm going to turn, and then if I keep fighting, I pull, and then I turn <laughs> and see what happens every time. I pull, he pulls, and then when you pull, pull, he pulls back. Pull, he pulls back. Every time you let him, yeah, there you go, pull back. And then go turn. And then if he goes one way, turn the other way. Now, so far, most people will have let go by this point. But Liam... Liam's a good guy. I knew he was going to help me tonight. Because yeah. I want you to see, because you're going to have this concern. Now what? He still has it. You're going to take this here. <laughs> Can you see where we're going with this? I mean, it's so obvious, right? Look how much I have. Look how little he has. It's because I started here. I'm going to push this into his jaw and just break his jaw. Not for real, because I like Liam. He's a good guy. But... If I went full speed, really resist. Because he, he won't let me do this. It doesn't work, right? That works a little bit. Most of, the, most of the time, you'll get it off. But now he's thinking about all this pulling and twisting. So I'm going to step in. You always want to step in. I'm going to slide this hand. This hand doesn't move. That's your pivot point. See what's happening? I'm creating, what's it called? He's an, en he's an engineer. What, what is it? Leverage. Leverage. He just came from his engineering job. I've got leverage now to stick this straight through his jaw. You can let go for a second. Does everybody see that? That's simple, right? If, if, you, if you're getting ready to hit him here, he catches it. Immediately get your other hand on it. Pull. He'll pull back. Go with it. Push to the ground. If he's too strong, just change that whole position. Let me see if we can turn just a little bit so you can see. See how that comes through. Now resist, really resist, don't let me do that, because that'll hurt. <laughs> it, he's, now he's trying, to, he's trying to pull it back again, so then go up and under to the, to the we gotta let him see it, Liam. Oh, yeah. So it comes, all it's, it's just about twisting. Now from here, I go right through his eye, he's looking at me through his eyes, he's thinking, you gonna hit me in the eye with that? I'm thinking, I might. <laughs> but that's how it works, you can let go for a second. That's the key. It's twisting and then pushing. And if this doesn't work, come here and then down. Now, let's say in the other position, because I've told you about this too. This is one of my favorite strikes. Just, I'm not gonna hit you. Right, right to his face, right? This is that inch and a quarter piece of oak. It's heavy, it's heavy, right? Right through his nose, right through his face. But he's, he instinctively, he goes to catch it. He puts his hands on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Now, see where his hands are? You're going to go 12 o'clock and 6 on, on an old-fashioned clock. 12 and 6. Whichever hand is in the 12 o'clock position will now just drive down. See how that puts me? I can now, I can shove it because he can't support I can put that right through his throat and finish it. Or I can just continue to the ground and he either lets go because his wrists are going the way they're not supposed to, or I smash things along the way. If this were the Joe or the Bo staff, it would be an even longer, what's the word? Longer. Leverage. Leverage lever. Guess. Longer lever. Yeah. I have a longer <laughs> lever. Yeah. I'm putting the engineer on the spot tonight. But see how that also puts his hands together? All those nerves just kind of twist. See what's yeah. happening? And it's not that I'm stronger than him. I just have more leverage. I have more leverage. I have better leverage. So you say, well, what if he does that to me? Well, then he probably took my class, you know? Yeah. It's not very likely. That's the point. What's most instinctive is he's going to try to pull it away or twist. And if he pulls it away. Let him have it. Turn. <laughs> and I have to slow everything down here because if I go fast, I'm going to hurt him for real. Right? But that's basically it. 
Now everything's, he's all locked up. Once this position is off, I can shove in there. I can start boxing him against the head, breaking his jaw, that kind of stuff. Now what happens if he has a hand inside and outside? See that hand inside and outside? 12 and six. It's the same thing. Is it as easy? Not until I do this. So from here, I step back. And by stepping back, however much your body weighs, you add that to your lever. He's trying to figure out. His, I love his engineer brain. He's, he's ch constantly changing his hand position. Just go over a little bit. <laughs> yeah, step back. So, so I got here and he started to add good res And Liam's taller than me by four inches and he's much stronger and he's young. He's a good looking guy, right? Yeah. He's stronger than me. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so if I push here, he's resisting me a lot, so I need to just go a little bit more. See what that does to his elbow and his grip, and then I come down. So it's, it's again, it's the turn. You might have to turn a little bit more, and then the front hand, the top hand, just goes down. That's, that's the, big, the big problem, or big uh, thing. That's with my hands in this push-up position. If your hands are in the opposite grip, opposing each other, same thing. It'll be actually a little bit easier because you'll be in a stronger hand position. So when your hands are opposing, you have more strength. It's like if you ever go to do pull-ups, this is hard, Wait, this is hard, this is harder for most people, this is easier for almost everybody, Change, switching your grip. You wanna get pull-up faster, do them with split grips, constantly changing. But if he grabs you here and your hands are split, change. If he grabs you like this, don't change your hand. Because in that moment that you take your hand off of it, he's going to rip it out of your hand, and then you're fighting for it again. Right? So from here, if your hands are both here, it still works. You just have to turn a little bit more. Now, what's the strongest muscle groups in your body? It's your, your core muscles, your front and your back. So if I'm here, I have to turn my hips and my shoulders. When you engage by turning your hips and your shoulders, get your front, back, front muscles, your back muscles in. And how do you move your whole body? Take a step. So if you take a step, now really resist, because I know he really wants to. Now he really wants to resist. I can't get him here, so I'm going to get him over here. <laughs> and you can see. Yeah. I, I, and then I, you have it free, and you, you, you have to fight him. So the key is, and, and I'm giving him all the setup. He knows what we're going to do too, right? So in a real-life self-defense situation, he might not know all this is coming. And so you might... I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not going to hit you. You might just go really fast, right? And if you explode fast and you go fast, you should be able to knock it off 90%. You run into the young engineer who's taller than you are, and he knows what you're doing, and he wants to, and I like this because he wants to make sure, he wants to hold me accountable. Don't teach him any bull crap, Mr. Matt, yeah. right? Don't tell him the, it's not, it's not, it doesn't work, doesn't work. But think about the basic principles. Pull, force versus him to pull back, and then go with it. See how that already gets it up? I stop myself because I don't want to stick it through his face, for real. Or you're struggling, he's struggling this way, and he's pulling. It's just like judo. Go back. Judo was my first martial art. Go back the other way. Get stronger by engaging your shoulders, your hips. Turn those, and then step with your whole body. And when you step with your whole body, even if he's physically stronger, even if he has a better position by engaging and moving your body at the same time, and then just do a little bit of practice. But those are the basics. The question is always, what happens if they grab a stick? Now, let's go all the way back to the beginning and talk about what happens if they grab a stick. Don't let them grab the stick <laughs> if you can avoid it. And, and what causes, what allows them to grab the stick? This is, this is why I don't teach you the old style, uh, Aikido style, or... Like when we do the cane, we're not doing hop keto cane. We're not doing cane fu. We're not doing hanbo the way the ninjutsu does it, the ninja do, because the ninja is standing like this waiting. And the samurai has a samurai sword. And they're both wearing long, funny pants that split down the middle. It looks like a big skirt. That's not what we're doing. I'm not going to wait for him to throw a punch to my nose just slowly so that I can block it. I'm not letting him throw the, the uh, other hand to the body so I can sidestep and smash 
or reach in behind him and turn him down to the ground. I don't want you to learn that stuff because that takes so much practice in a partner and a partner who's feeding you right. And Liam wouldn't be your partner because he's going to make you learn it right. Or Liam would be a good partner for that. But yeah. none of that, right? As soon as I realized he's a threat and I said back up, I'm going straight in. I'm going to hit him here and I'm going to hit him two or three times as hard as I can. And then I'm going into his, his temple to try to turn off his operating system or into the neck or into the thing here. I'm coming through here and I'm coming down on top or lifting him up off the ground this way. That's what I want you to learn how to do, not how to do the old style throw a punch again, the circular block, come in, take him down. That's cool. It's fun when, when you learn that kind of stuff. I had the guy in the other night, we were talking about this other self-defense. Here, hold that and do something with it so they, right, they learn. Man. They have something to see? Nice, see, I told you he's been practicing. Good, all right, so we were in the other night and one of the other clients, I have a, a multitude of older clients now, and he, had, he, he wanted to get this out because he wanted me to demonstrate to his family how to do the take, take away and how to do all this stuff and get it back. Like all that goofy, I'm just going to say Krav Maga, all that other stuff that you see on TV where he's got it like this and it's on their back and then show them how to, and I said, that's, that's not realistic. That doesn't work. What happens is, when he's got it like this, go ahead and take it away, pop, 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 pop. When he pulls it out, pop, pop, pop. That's what happened. Pulls it out, pop, pop, pop. That's the reality. It's not one of these, give me all your money. <laughs> they don't even hold on. This is how you're supposed to present when you know how, what you're doing. It's, it's not like that, right? It's bam, 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 bam. It's out of anger, pop, pop, pop. And they're going for a, a headshot for a specific reason. It, the horrible, worst reason you can imagine. So... What I explained is, as soon as you see that, that's coming here, as soon as you see it, you just grab it like this. Point that away from you. You've got, what was that word, fancy word? Leverage. Leverage, look at that. Who has the leverage here? <laughs> you do. Yeah. He's got the short side, you've got the long side. So this comes out, even if it's a small thing, you're, you're here and then you're coming in to his operating system. You're coming in with an elbow to crush his larynx so he asphyxiates and you don't have to worry about this. But if you're going to wait for him to pull it out and aim it at you, you're, you're already done. It doesn't work. All the, and, and I can't state this enough. When I see these videos, and they're, they used to be fun to watch. Now it even annoys me just watching them. And the, the guy's holding it like this. I can't even, I can't even take, can't force myself to put my finger on the trigger because of all of the safety training that I've had. I can't even stand pointing at somebody that I'm not, when I'm not gonna use it, right? But you get the point. And you see this one and he's doing this kind of thing and then, you know, and then he does the takeaway and they do the three seconds flat. That doesn't work, it's crap. <laughs> Part of my French. But he bring, as soon as you see that, you're, you're, if, if he gets it up to there, you're done, right? If, it's, if you can get it down here, you can get it down here, and you point that away from you, and you're holding the slide. If it's uh, if it's one of these, you know, if it's not, it's a revolver or whatever. But you're holding the muzzle, and you're pointing it, uh, hopefully away from you, and not at somebody else. And then your other, your whole focus is no longer on this. Your hands locked as tight as you can get it, and the rest of it is just going straight through his soul to end him, because he's got one of these. That's going to end you, right? So for self-defense, that's what you're going for. Thank you, sir. That's all we're working on. We're working on basic, basic, basic. So if I don't do collie sticks the way that some other collie gurus might do, no, I'm not. I'm not a collie guru, and I don't ever want to be. And no offense to collie people, because or FMA or Screamer Arnie's. Those guys, and I have such deep respect for guys like Dan and Asanto and Tommy Deboda and all those guys who are just like high-level experts. They're magicians. They're beautiful to watch, and they're lethal. They're deadly, right? But if you pick up two sticks or one stick and you're at the grocery store and there's an active situation and, you and that's all you have, I want you to know how to use it. And I don't want you to be like waiting for the last second and then you're gonna do a certain kind of thing or you're gonna do a Jason Bourne kind of thing or a Taken kind of thing. I want you to be able to stick it right through his eye, hide behind the, you know, the, the produce. 
and then get him as he comes by and hit him so hard in the back of the head and jab that thing through his spine for basic self-defense. That's what we work on. Anyway, you guys have been awesome. Liam, well, uh, thanks for letting us thank put you. you on the spot. I've been, I've been dying to have somebody here. Yeah. Liam just walked into the trap. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much.